Hello and welcome back to the course on blockchain. Today we will be talking about hashing in blockchain. This is the foundation of blockchain and the cryptography concept. So let's deep dive into the concept. So what basically hashing is? See, hashing is a mathematical process that creates a one-to-one -one mapping between any piece of data and a 32-byte reference using two random and unique numerical inputs between 0 and the 255 power. Using hash functions, any data, including simple text, images, or any other form of file is given a distinct and entirely unique identifiers. Hashing is used for verifying data integrity, creating digital signatures, and providing a secure way to store passwords. These functions are deterministic, meaning that the same input will always produce the same output. They can be designed to be fast or slow, depending on the purpose. Fast hash functions are used when speed is important, while slow hash functions are used when security is the priority. Slow hash functions are also used to mitigate the success of brute force attacks by increasing the amount of work required to find the data. So, now that you know what hashing is, so let's discuss the SHA-256 algorithm. Let's understand this using an example. There's a person, could be you or me, and we have a fingerprint and different people have different fingerprints. There is a possibility that two persons have the same fingerprints, but it's very unlikely. The probability of that is about 1 in 60 million. So in a way, you can say that a fingerprint is an identifier of a person, and that's a very powerful concept that is used by the forensics department in the police where they can identify criminals just by their fingerprints and take the evidence to court. Now what if we could take the same principle and apply it to digital documents? What if we could come up with a sort of fingerprint that would identify those documents for us? And such a fingerprint exists, it's called the SHA-256 hash and it looks like this. SHA-256 is a part of SHA-2 family of algorithms, where SHA stands for Secure Hash Algorithm. It came into existence during 2001, which was a joint effort between the NSA and NIST to introduce a successor to the SHA-1 family, which was slowly losing strength against brute force attacks. So SHA-256 algorithm came into existence which works well, it's very secure and a lot of applications use it to store passwords to check digital documents too, and in fact, in blockchain it is used, it's like one of the core principles, building blocks of blockchain as we'll see further down in the section. And the code for SHA-256 is not secret. It's open, completely open. Anybody can learn it, understand it, how it works. Now this hash is called SHA-256 because SHA stands for Secure Hash Algorithm and 256 is the number of the bits it takes up in memory. The hash is always 64 characters long and it consists of digits as well as letters. That's because it's a hexadecimal hash. It has numbers from 0 to 9 and the letters A, B, C, D, E, F. So there's total of 16 of them. So that means each characters and the resulting hash takes up 4 bits because 4 to the power of 2 is 16 and 4 times 64 is 256. That's how these numbers are all linked up together. And the important thing to note here is that this algorithm works with any type of digital document that can be video, audio, text, exe files, etc. So we can say that whatever digital file you put it will generate a fingerprint which is a SHA-256 hash. So let's have a look and see SHA-256 in action. See how it works. Let's put a word of future assets there. So you can see the hash for it which is ending with 1D9834 and is of 64 character long. So it always will reproduce the same hash if you put in the same data. And that's logical, right? So if we check fingerprint of the same person again again at different times it's gonna be the same every time otherwise it wouldn't really make sense you wouldn't be able to use it for forensics. Another thing is that if we change one tiny symbol, like we add in another exclamation mark here, the hash changes completely and entirely. That's called avalanche effect. We'll talk more about it just now. But the main point here is that making a slight change the hash doesn't change just slightly, it changes completely. You can try like remove the exclamation mark and put a dot, this will create completely different hash. And as discussed, you can put anything here. And one thing to keep in mind is you'll always get hash which is of 64 characters. 
Let's try pasting this article and see you will get the hash which is just 256 bits, which is 64 characters. So there we go, that's SHA-256 in demonstration. I will also paste this link in the video description and you can play with your own sets of words. Okay, so there is five requirements for hash algorithms, SHA-256 is not the only one algorithm out there. There is other two such as SHA-512, SHA-3, Blake-2, etc. However, there are certain requirements for it to be useful. The requirements are first, it has to be one way. Second, it has to be deterministic. Third, it has to be fast computation. Fourth, avalanche effect. Fifth, it must withstand collisions. So, let's discuss all the requirements in details. Number one is it has to be one way. So basically what that means is that you cannot go backwards. That you cannot go from the hash to the documents. So you cannot restore or reverse engineer the document based on the hash. It has to be like a fingerprint, like for a human. If you have the fingerprints, you cannot restore what the person looks like. You cannot understand what color eyes they had or anything else about them. But at the same time, if you have a person, you can always get their fingerprints. So it's only one way. Number two is it has to be deterministic, meaning that if I take the same document, exactly the same document later on, and I run the same hash algorithm again, I'll get exactly the same result as we saw with that illustration. Third requirement is it has to have fast computation, and we'll see throughout the course why that's important. And the fourth requirement is the avalanche effect. It is an ultra-important requirement of the hash algorithm. So let's see what it implies. The avalanche effect means that if I take exactly the same document and I make tiny little change, even one bit of data I change in the document. For instance, we got a dot over here. So if we do that tiny little change, then the hash will be absolutely different. So we already saw that in the demonstration where when we were adding an extra exclamation mark or making some other small changes, the reason it's called the avalanche effect is because of how that is implemented inside the algorithm. So it's very smart how it's caused and it's very similar to an avalanche where one tiny like wrong step can cause snow to start moving and then more snow moves and more snow moves and you get an avalanche. So that's what the avalanche effect is and it's very, very important concept in the application of blockchain. And part 5, it must withstand collisions. So what does that mean? What does withstanding collisions mean? Well, like as we saw in the example of people, that's 1 in 60 million, you can have two people who have the same fingerprint. And same thing for the hashing algorithm. So with the hash algorithm, as you can see it's 64 bits, right? So it's very limited even though there's a lot of different variations that you can have, it's still limited, it's not infinite. And yet the quantity of different digital documents that can be created is unlimited. There's tons and tons of books, there's terabytes of different photos being created every single day, videos, all this stuff so in essence, the amount of digital data we have is much greater or we can possibly have is much greater than the different number of variations of a 64 character representation. And so that means, in mathematics there's a principle called the pigeonhole principle. It states that if n items are put into m containers, with n greater than m, then at least one container must contain more than one item. It means if you have for instance, in this case 10 pigeons and only 9 holes, you're gonna have to put 2 pigeons into one of those holes. There's no way around it, right? So if you have more of quantity A, then there is slots in quantity B then inevitably there will be what we call collisions in that representation when you try to move from quantity A which is much greater to quantity B. So naturally there will be collisions and you can't do anything about it, it's just pigeonhole principle. And that's okay. The thing with that is that it is so unlikely, it is so rare that, if it happens then we can deal with it, it's okay it's not going to ruin the algorithm. The problem, just like with humans' fingerprints, we can tolerate that. But it must withstand collisions. What does that mean is that the algorithm needs to be able to withstand artificial collisions that for instance pirates can create and that's a problem. So if you can find a way to create these collisions to make two different documents purposefully and it have the same hash, that's a problem because then you can forge documents. Then you might have an important document for instance, there is an ownership document. 
And if you know a way to forge collisions to create artificial collisions, then you'll be able to change the name on the document and the hash will be same. So the person checking the document by the hash will think that you are the owner of the house. And so that's what we mean by withstand collisions. So collisions should not be possible. This is the foundation of what we're going to be discussing about blockchain. If you'd like to learn exactly about how the SHA-256 algorithm works, then you can check it out here. The paper is called Gone the Secure Hash Algorithm Family. It is actually Chapter 1 of the book A Cryptography in Context, Chapter 1 written by Wouter Pinard and Tim Van Werkhoven. I have also attached a link to this chapter in the video description. Currently Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash uses SHA-256 hashing algorithm. Somehow Ethereum and Substrate also earlier used SHA-256, but now Ethereum uses SHA-3 and Substrate slash Polkadot uses Blake-2 algorithm. Hope you liked this video on hashing and blockchain. And now you're well versed in hashing and SHA-256 and we'll start learning more about blockchain in the next coming videos. And I look forward to seeing you there. Until then, enjoy blockchain.